From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. If you'd like to become an official weirdo, simply click that subscribe button and, while you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you're a weirdo. A new rule would ban most Americans from traveling to North Korea. Well, there goes this year's big vacation. McMenamins, a Northwest brewery, restaurant, hotel chain, is holding a halfway to St. Patrick's Day celebration on September 16th. Um, why? What, because you need another excuse to get drunk? You're a brewery! Don't you already have that covered? A Norwegian news site makes readers answer questions to prove they understand the story before posting comments. Norwegian broadcaster NRK's website will present people who want to leave comments with a quiz that asks them about what the story is actually about. The creators of the quiz hope that asking people the questions will make sure that everybody in the comments actually understands the story. Well, forget the Norway news site. We need this for Facebook and Twitter. Scientists say they have found the brain's on switch for burning fat. I'm assuming mine has the safety on. Soda consumption has dropped to a 31-year low. And I've got good money on it that Coke Zero Sugar ain't gonna fix that. Age 72 is the new 30. Nope, not kidding. Researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Demographic Research in Germany examined how the probability of dying at specific ages has changed over time. Our ancestors had the same odds of dying at the age of 30 as men today face at the age of 72. So following, all right, following this logic then, at my age of 48, I'm actually only six years old. So why do I have all these adult responsibilities if I'm only old enough to be in the first grade, huh? Uh, this is child abuse, dagnabbit! The survey says the number of TVs per household in the United States has dropped from 2.6 to 2.3. Really? How do you watch a third of a television? Krispy Kreme is going to start serving Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Donuts because their other donuts apparently weren't unhealthy enough. When a little girl was scared of finding monsters in her new home, she knew just who to call – the local police. Four-year-old Sydney Farenbrook had just moved into a house in Longmont, Colorado two weeks ago when she started hearing spooky noises from around the building. While as a means of ensuring that her house was safe, she then called Officer David Bonday and asked if he would come over and help make sure that there weren't any monsters hiding under the furniture. Finally, they remembered that they were in Colorado and that the monsters were probably just potheads outside the house looking for a place to crash for a while. Michael Strahan missed a show last week because he lost a part of his pinky in an accident. So sipping tea will never be the same. Poor guy. A German man caught speeding was also driving with a cockatoo on his shoulder. The man said his pet bird was bored at home and he wanted to take her for a ride. Uh, did, did you not think first maybe to just to buy the bird a mirror? President Trump is gearing up for a 17-day vacation at his golf resort in New Jersey. 17 days in Jersey? Why? What, did he lose a bet? World Market released their pumpkin spice coffee last week. Seriously? Already? What, is summer too long for you people? Apple announced its third quarter earnings last week, and the numbers were positive, to say the least. The company's quarterly revenue was $45.4 billion. It was noted that Apple could easily buy Walmart with that kind of profit. But it's Apple, meaning you'd never be in danger ever again of being hit with falling prices. The University of Washington study says that Asian Americans are viewed as being more American if they're overweight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I have to tell you, uh, that has nothing to do with being Asian and everything to do with being overweight. Like the rest of America. A man in Australia, Newcastle, has become an instant millionaire after finding a winning lotto ticket while cleaning his car. The man had purchased the ticket at the start of last year but only discovered that he won when he went online and checked the numbers after finding the ticket at the bottom of an old shopping bag in his car. Now, I told my wife this story in the hopes that she would run out and begin cleaning my car. Uh, she didn't fall for that. 
A man in China who was so dissatisfied with his haircut that he made daily deliveries of human feces to the barber shop that gave it to him. The poop slinger was apprehended after the shop's owner called police. In Eureka, Missouri, a mom got so upset about how a neighborhood kid treated her daughter that she took the nine-year-old boy, shaved his head, and wrote the word pervert on his forehead with a felt pen. This for pulling her girl's hair. Can you imagine what she'd do if the kid got gum in her carpet? NASA is currently looking for someone with a secret security clearance to ensure that alien life or organic constituent and biological contamination doesn't make its way back to Earth in a spaceship. Now, I don't mean to be an armchair quarterback here, but shouldn't they have offered this to Sigourney Weaver before taking other applications? Floyd Mayweather is expecting to make more than $300 million from his fight with Conor McGregor, and that would break down to more than $8 million per minute in the ring. $8 million per minute? Sign me up! Oh, yeah, sure, I'd, I'd only last like three seconds, but still, that's almost $400,000 which would be more than enough to pay off all my debt, get me a new house and a car. I, yeah, sure, I'd be in a coma the rest of my life, but I'd be living the dream. Police in Louisiana have arrested a man after finding two pounds of marijuana hidden in Honey Nut Cheerios and Cap'n Crunch cereal boxes in his car. He obviously thought that he was in Colorado, where marijuana is part of a complete breakfast. Some people say they get a real rush or even high from a good workout. The power plant gym in San Francisco is taking that concept to an entirely new level. It's the brainchild of Jim McAlpine who says his new gym will not only allow smoking pot during a workout, it will encourage it. The 46-year-old, along with former NFL star and marijuana advocate Ricky Williams, hopes the new gym shatters common pot stigmas, but also insists the facility will in no way be a stoner hangout, describing it instead as a premier gym. McAlpine then explained the advantages, saying if you use it right, cannabis takes the things you love and lets you love them more. With fitness, that can help you get into the zone, into eye of the tiger mode. People will be able to buy and smoke weed at the gym, while McAlpine himself is working a range of edibles, designed specifically for pre- and post-workout. And while marijuana has been proven to reduce a person's reaction time, Scientists also suggest it can raise a person's threshold for pain and be used to reduce inflammation. And if you do get hurt during your workout, you'll be too high and happy to care or think about suing. Elon Musk tested his mass transit system called the Hyperloop and was able to accelerate to 193 miles per hour in only five seconds. Unfortunately, stopping took two and a half hours. According to The Hollywood Reporter, President Trump was considered for the role of the president in the 2015 TV movie Sharknado 3. The producers decided against it, though, because they thought that a Trump presidency in a movie about a tornado made up of sharks would be too unbelievable. Lego has been forced to recall 120,000 new Lego sets after a worker labeled pieces with the wrong shade of gray. The sets, including the extremely popular Star Wars, were supposed to contain dark gray Lego bricks. Sadly, human error means light gray pieces were included instead from the plant in Denmark. It's a bigger deal than you think and will likely cost Lego around $1.5 million. But props to the famous toy maker, rather than disciplining the employee for the error, Lego invested $60,000 on improving lighting and labeling at the factory. The 2015 mishap was revealed in LEGO's in-house staff magazine last week. And don't feel too bad, despite the unplanned expenditure, LEGO still enjoyed a record-high revenue of over $4 billion last year. Chris Christie says that the fan he berated at a Cubs-Brewers game in Milwaukee last Sunday is lucky I didn't dump the nachos I was holding on him or anything, which was an option. Christie adds that the incident will not deter him from attending baseball games in the future which New Jersey is perfectly fine with, as it keeps him away from the office, potentially doing more damage. A Florida man is claiming his dog shot his girlfriend while she was sleeping. The incident happened at the home of Brian Murphy and his girlfriend, Summer Miracle, one recent evening. Following a walk with Murphy, Diesel the dog ran into the bedroom where Miracle was sleeping. Murphy says he saw a flash and heard a loud bang. He thinks Diesel jumped on the nightstand where his gun was sitting and it went off. Miracle was shot in the leg but is expected to recover. 
In response, Florida legislators are working to pass a bill requiring a five-day waiting period on getting a hunting dog. According to Golf.com, the reason President Trump golfs so much is because he thinks the White House is a dump. Which makes me wonder if the Donald has solid gold porta potties on the golf course. That would be impressive. Want to own the Charlotte's Web Farm? A piece of Americana is up for sale in Maine. The farm, on which E.B. White lived and used as a setting for Charlotte's Web, is on the market, and it can be yours for the low, low price of $3.7 million. Owners Mary and Robert Gallant say they are reluctantly selling the 44-acre farm in Brooklyn where they've lived for three decades. White bought the place with his wife Catherine in 1933 and lived there until his death in 1985. Aside from modest updates to the kitchen and flooring, the Gallants have mostly kept the place as it was when E.B. White lived there. If you do decide to move in, you should be prepared for regular visitors from fans of White. In fact, Mary Gallant says the author would turn over in his grave if he knew how many people stop here. She then adds, but to me, that's absolutely wonderful that he is so alive to the world. New White House Chief of Staff John Kelly has reportedly called Attorney General Jeff Sessions to assure him that his job is safe. So in other words, you better get that resume updated, Jeff. The survey says young Instagrammers use the app 32 minutes a day. 32 minutes a day snapping selfies. Well, I guess future generations won't have any problem finding documentary evidence for why society collapsed. Walt Disney Studios is developing a reboot of the 1991 action-adventure movie The Rocketeer. The project in the early development stages is considered a sequel reboot and, in a modern-day twist, will be headlined by a black female character. Yes, because the gender swap idea was so successful in Ghostbusters. 21% of U.S. broadband households use wellness, fitness, or diet apps. Now, I'm not saying those apps actually work for anybody, but people do have them. West Virginia's Governor Jim Justice is switching from being a Democrat to becoming a Republican. Uh, no need to worry, though. It won't really matter much because both parties now have the same goal of destroying the country. 65-year-old Tom Wopat, the actor who played Luke Duke in the 1980s television show The Dukes of Hazard, is facing indecent assault and battery and drug charges. You see what happens now when you take the Confederate flag away from the Southern boys? They get all rowdy. Why can't the system just leave those Duke boys alone, huh? Some people are born to be wild. Others are born to mope. A study from the University of Michigan states, we have identified a blue marker that's linked to an increased risk of major depression. Brain scans revealed that people who react strongly to negative experiences have drastically lower levels of a brain molecule called neuropeptide Y. And in response to negative words, says the study, the lower NPY group showed strong activation in the prefrontal cortex, which is involved with the processing of emotion, while subjects with higher NPY demonstrated a much smaller response. The researchers are hoping this discovery will lead to better treatments for people with severe depression. In the meantime, if you always see the glass as half empty, then just grab it with gusto, drink a toast to your genes, and accept the fact that you are a born pessimist. Dunkin' Donuts is experimenting with a new name in California, calling itself just Dunkin'. It's a pretty good move, you know, with today's ever-decreasing attention span. A decade from now, Dunkin' Donuts will just be named Dunk, and then eventually Duh. Trump aide Kellyanne Conway says the president's low approval rating is because people want to see progress on his agenda. Personally, I just think the low approval ratings are fake news. Former FBI Director James Comey has inked a book deal. Because of course he did. Five a day is not enough. To add years to your life, eat ten daily servings of fruits and vegetables, say British researchers, who have found that packing our diet with everything from apples to zucchini lowers our risk of heart attack, stroke, cancer, and early death. Ten a day is such a powerful recipe for good health and longevity that the team from Imperial College London estimates that if everyone around the globe did this, the staggering 7.8 million premature deaths worldwide would be avoided every year. Now, to arrive at this conclusion, the Imperial College London scientists they analyzed 95 previous research studies 
That included almost 2 million people. Now, how much is 10 servings a day? Well, it's about 800 grams of produce, and that translates to 10 small bananas or apples or 30 tablespoons of cooked spinach, peas, broccoli, or cauliflower. Whoa! To 10 small bananas or apples per day. 10? Forget it. That ain't gonna happen. So I guess I'm dying prematurely. Nike re-released the Air Max shoes on Friday, two decades after they were first unveiled. Man, two decades. I hope they use some odor eaters and Febreze on those things. An Alabama Islamic organization is asking for an investigation after a Muslim family sat at McDonald's purposely served them bacon. Yeah, it was done on purpose, because McDonald's ultra-successful business model is based on offending as many people as possible. The number of U.S. wineries is now almost up to 10,000. If you spend a half hour watching the news, you'll know why Americans are drinking more. Shaquille O'Neal says he blames God for his bad free-throw shooting as a way of keeping him humble. Uh, apparently that didn't work. Humility is not blaming somebody else for your problems. The Chinese man claims his beer-drinking pet duck can understand him. The man takes his duck for a walk every day and claims it will sit or fly on command. He feeds the duck mainly peanuts, but also it enjoys seafood and beer. It actually prefers to drink cold duck, but the man thought that that was a bit inappropriate. Driverless bus services have been launched in Estonia. Now you get an unfeeling cold robot insisting on exact change. Hey, if you recently deposited a bag of cocaine along with your cash at an ATM machine in Bradenton, Florida, well, the police would like a word with you. A technician was called to check out a jammed ATM at a Suncoast Credit Union branch, and he quickly discovered the cause – a small, clear baggie containing a white, powdery substance. The technician concluded that the substance was possibly with the cash of the last person who made the deposit, causing the malfunction. Police got the name on the bank account of the last deposit made and are now looking for that person. The powdery substance tested positive for cocaine. All right, even if you have a safety deposit box at the banking institution, you can't make a deposit into it via the ATM. But then, if your brain wasn't on cocaine, you probably would have known that. Scientists say with the moon moving farther away, the last solar eclipse visible on Earth will be in 600 million years. So you better pay attention this August 21st. You don't know how many more you're going to get before they're gone forever. A frowning poop emoji is said to be in the works because, let's face it, anything that requires a picture of poop probably shouldn't have a happy face anyway. Half of the candidates for mayor in the city of Detroit are convicted felons. This is outrageous! I mean, you expect that in Chicago, but in Michigan? According to a new study, cats may have more potential than dogs to sniff out bombs. Which may be true, but they just won't care enough to do it. So you think you can dance winner Joshua Allen has been sentenced to a year in jail on domestic violence charges. Just wait until his fellow inmates find out his claim to fame as being a dancer. A new CNN poll finds that only 24 percent of those surveyed trust the information coming out of the White House. But then that news came from CNN, so it might not be accurate at all. In Tucson, Arizona, Little Caesars Pizza is experimenting with a pizza vending machine called a Pizza Portal, when you would walk into their store, pick out a pizza, and have it served up by the machine, never talking with a human. It's a pizza created by the caring, loving hands of a Terminator. The survey says millennials would rather save money for travel or retirement than buy clothes so they might be better off financially at retirement age, but they'll be naked. Did you know GM is already selling a $5,000 electric car in China? China purchases 40 percent of the electric cars produced in the world. And not only does cheap stuff get made in China, it gets sent there too, apparently. You'll be happy to hear that American tourists aren't the only ones who occasionally act like idiots in other countries. Two Chinese tourists were arrested in Berlin after police spotted them taking pictures of each other giving the Hitler salute outside the Reichstag. This is pretty serious stuff thanks to a post-1945 law that makes flags, insignia, uniforms, slogans, and forms of greeting of unconstitutional organizations, like the Nazis, 
very illegal. The two men, aged 36 and 49, now face up to three years in prison or a day trip to Auschwitz, whichever they prefer. A Minnesota man is facing his ninth DWI-related charge after he allegedly was caught driving a lawnmower while intoxicated. Well, yeah, but haven't yard work and beer always gone together? A study says five new brain disorders have been created by digital obsession. Well, well I'm sorry, no, make that six. Now there's a disorder for looking for disorders. Four Dallas police officers who responded to a noise complaint Saturday night ended up dancing at the wedding that was causing the noise. In a video shared on social media, the officers can be seen dancing with bridesmaids, the bride, and other attendants. Plus, the bride got her something blue. It had been over two weeks since anyone had heard from Jamie Tull. That's because the 33-year-old former kindergarten teacher crashed her car in a ditch in rural central California on July 17th. Rescuers found her emaciated, dehydrated, and severely sunburned. They called it a miracle that they'd even spotted her lying in a field too weak to walk. Tall told authorities she survived by eating two grasshoppers and a fly and drinking water from a dirty cattle trough. Rescuer Robert Carpenter said anyone who can survive out here for 17 days is an amazing gal to me. Friends and family had been searching for Tall at a desolate cattle ranching area near La Grande since her car was found in a ditch. Searchers were set to scale back the effort when they spotted her less than a mile from the crash site in Tall Grass. Lynn Garber was one of the searchers who found Tall and says Tall told them she had been praying throughout her ordeal and was glad to be found. However, Merced County Sheriff Vern Warkey tells things a little bit differently, saying Tall asked for food and water but then told searchers to leave her. She hunkered down. She didn't want to be found, says Warnke. Tall's family told reporters she suffers from bipolar disorder but stopped taking her medication at the urging of a pastor and his wife who associated the pills with demons. She's recovering at a burn unit at a Fresno hospital. Okay, uh, word of advice here from a born-again Christian, which I am. Uh, if your pastor tells you that you're taking medication and it's associated with demons, you need to find a different church. The people in charge of the rules of golf made some sweeping changes to the game recently, hoping to make it more appealing to the masses. Among the changes, you can now leave the flag in the hole when you putt, you can legally pull your ball out of the sand and take a penalty stroke, and the time allowed to search for a missing ball has been cut from five minutes to three. And instead of yelling four, you're also now allowed to yell, INCOMING! L'Oreal is predicting that soon there will be male cosmetic counters popping up in stores. Okay, that, that's it. I, I'm starting a GoFundMe campaign to raise enough money to buy an island so I can get away from these creeps. Donors to the campaign, you get to come with me. 57% of American adults and a whopping 73% of young people ages 12 to 17 use Facebook, and most of us visit the site at least once a day. Half of all adult Facebook users have more than 200 friends in their network, but only 15% have more than 500 friends. 12% of Facebook users say that somebody else has asked them to unfriend a person in their network, and younger users are more likely to have experienced this than older users, while 44% of Facebook users like their friends' content and comment on photos at least once a day. Only 10% change or update their own status on Facebook daily. 25% say they never change or update their Facebook status. Now, if you'd like to read all of that for yourself, uh, I'll post it to Facebook. YouTube gets 4.1 million views every minute, which I'm not seeing any of, dagnabbit. Somebody watch my videos! YouTube.com slash MarlarHouse. The tensions between the U.S. and North Korea took an apocalyptic turn on Tuesday as President Trump vowed to unleash fire and fury like the world has never seen if Pyongyang continues its threats against America. So, you know, just in case we are no longer here on the planet Earth tomorrow, let me say what a pleasure it has been so far to entertain you. David Letterman, who stepped down following a 33-year run as late-night TV host in 2015, has signed on with Netflix to host an interview series. Of his return to work, Letterman says, "...here's what I've learned. If you retire to spend more time with your family, check with your family first." India is having a tomato shortage. French fries still only cost you 99 cents, but if you want ketchup, they're $24.99. 
After dealing with the next Karate Kid and an attempted reboot of the Karate Kid, now an actual Karate Kid sequel starring Ralph Macchio is officially in the works. I just can't see a middle-aged Daniel's son being all that intimidating. A professor at the University of Georgia is letting students pick their own grade to reduce stress. Where were these people when I was growing up? You may be able to chew gum and walk at the same time, but don't try to text and walk. Distracted walking results in more injuries per mile than does distracted driving, according to a Buffalo, New York emergency room physician. Consequences of texting while walking include bumping into walls, falling downstairs, tripping over clutter or stepping into traffic. The issue is so common that in London, bumpers were placed onto light posts along a frequented avenue to prevent people from slamming into them. When texting, you're not as in control with the complex actions of walking, said Dr. Dietrich Gell, a professor of emergency medicine at the University of Buffalo. While talking on the phone is a distraction, texting is much more dangerous because you can't see the path in front of you. Though injuries from car accidents involving texting are often more severe, physical harm resulting from texting and walking occurs more frequently. Tens of thousands of pedestrians are treated annually in emergency rooms nationwide, and Shell believes as many as 10% of those visits result from accidents involving cell phones. Perhaps the anti-gum lobby, you know, maybe they should go after cell phones instead. Sounds like they're more dangerous. Al Gore's new film, An Inconvenient Sequel, had a poor box office opening, finishing in 15th place. Then again, think of all the electricity they saved by not having to fire up those projectors. Anthony Scaramucci, who recently spent 10 days as White House Communications Director, has topped a list of the 50 least powerful people in the world. The list was compiled by the website 24-7 Wall Street and focuses on well-known individuals who've recently experienced a precipitous loss in stature. Placing number two on the list was outgoing New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, former FBI Director James Comey was third, Tiger Woods came in at number five, and Kendall Jenner was sixth. Toilet paper featuring Donald Trump's tweets at 12 bucks a roll have sold out on Amazon. Got the toots? Wipe with the tweets! Two gurneys fell out of the back of the coroner's van and into traffic in Olympia, Washington. One of the gurneys had a body on it and was found in the middle of the intersection, while the second gurney rolled down a street and was found in a parking lot. Are we sure somebody just wasn't filming a sequel to Weekend at Bernie's? Sharknado 5 is on the Sci-Fi Channel this month. I set up my DVR to avoid it. In France, a man was on trial for burglary and the case was winding down. Just before the judge was about to hand down his sentence, the accused got up, pushed the prosecutor down, punched a police officer, and ran. Because of the confusion, he had a pretty good head start. Too bad one of his shoelaces came undone because that's what brought him down and allowed a security guard to catch him. See, now that's why a criminal's best friend is Velcro. A report says euthanasia is becoming common in the Netherlands, accounting for 4.5% of all deaths. This is horrifying. I mean, you know, I hear euthanasia can kill you. Irish singer Sinead O'Connor posted a desperate Facebook video the other day asking for help, which is news because she only does that on days that end in Y. The mayor of New York City wants to tax the wealthy to finance much-needed repairs to the subway. New York's millionaires all have the same question about the proposal. What's a subway? Fewer teens have an interest in driving. A new study says the share of high school seniors across the country who have a driver's license dropped from 85.3% in 1996 to a record low 71.5% in 2015. With Uber and Lyft already here and self-driving cars on the way, I can see the point. I mean, honestly, fewer high schoolers behind the wheel kind of makes me feel a whole heck of a lot safer on the roads already. With an average temperature of 107.39 degrees in July, Death Valley has set the record for hottest month at a single location in U.S. history. That number is an average of all the high and low temperatures, of which the average daily temperature was 119.6 degrees. Well, yeah, but it was a dry heat. Hiru Nakajima, the actor who stomped in a rubber suit to portray the original 1954 Godzilla, has died. He was 88. He'll be cremated using hot breath from a giant lizard. 
American Airlines says 10 people on a flight from Greece to Philadelphia were injured Saturday when it briefly encountered severe turbulence shortly before landing. And another couple of passengers got roughed up by airplane employees when they complained about the turbulence. Scientists have found a way to grow human tissue on apples. Be looking for greeting cards saying, you're the apple of my earlobe. A former chef for Queen Elizabeth II says she has four drinks every day. So she's more like us than we thought. Three servers were fired from the Sunset Tower Hotel's Starry Tower Bar on Monday after a photo of Robert Pattinson having dinner with Katy Perry was leaked. Leaked? They were having dinner at a restaurant. It's not like they could experience privacy there. Everybody would see them. Plus, what about the, the free publicity? I mean, you just had two big celebrities dining in your restaurant, and you fire the servers for taking a couple of pictures? They were doing you a favor. In Abilene, Texas, a 20-year-old man was armed with a gun at his apartment complex. He argued with his roommate, then tied him up and demanded money. The robber fell asleep, and the roommate managed to get free around 4 a.m. and call police. The robbery suspect was still asleep when police arrived. It has long been known that when you skimp on sleep, you're far more likely to overeat, make poor food choices, and gain weight. But why is that? Well, researchers from the University of Chicago Medical Center have figured it out. The short answer is, too little sleep gives you the munchies. Now, the long answer, sleep loss amplifies and extends blood levels of a chemical signal that enhances the joy of eating, particularly the guilty pleasures gained from sweet or salty high-fat snack foods. So long or short, pepperoni pizza is tasty. Malia Obama lost her iPhone at Lollapalooza in Chicago over the weekend. So I guess we know who the next leaked photos scandal will be focused on. The island of Guam is experiencing a high level of anxiety over North Korea's threat to hit it with a nuclear missile. But on the bright side, hotel prices are now a real bargain. A bakery in California is refusing to make a pro-Trump birthday cake for a nine-year-old boy. Okay, oh, now wait a minute here. So it's not okay to refuse to make a cake for religious reasons, but it is okay to refuse to make a cake for political reasons? Did I get that right? Kira Sedgwick recently found out that her husband of 29 years, Kevin Bacon, is a distant cousin. Awkward. Researchers say that co-workers who hug get along better and are more productive. Well, when they're not being sued for sexual harassment, that is. The government will relax its rules that protect the endangered sage-grouse. Finally, sage-grouse. It's what's for dinner. McDonald's is planning on doubling the number of restaurants they have in China. So now they'll have four. The house that was featured as the setting for the Beverly Hillbillies is up for sale and has the most expensive real estate price tag in the country – $350 million. It's in the Bel Air area near Beverly Hills. But it comes with its own cement pond, and that's pretty cool. A study says the hearing rate loss may double in the U.S. by the year 2060. For those of you already having trouble hearing, a study says the hearing rate loss may double in the U.S. by the year 2060. South Korea has introduced the first tax on robots out of concern that they're going to put people out of jobs. So be looking for the robot uprising in retaliation of taxation without representation. In Southern California, 42-year-old Andrew David Jensen made one bonehead mistake while allegedly robbing a home. He went to the bathroom number two, and didn't flush. And that left a nice pile of DNA evidence for police that led to his arrest. The DNA profile put together by investigators matched another profile in a national database, and detectives tracked Jensen down at his home in Ventura. So let this be a lesson to you parents. If you don't teach your children to flush and they choose crime as a career, they might incriminate themselves when they poo-poo. NBC's comedy streaming service CISO made its debut in January, but it will be shut down before the end of this year. If you're a fan of NBC's comedy streaming service, you're probably the only one. Tuesday was Election Day for Kenyans, and while some citizens dealt with long lines and others protected themselves from rain and chilly weather, a woman gave birth and still voted. 
Shortly after the woman arrived at her polling place, she went into labor and, with the assistance of bystanders, gave birth to a baby girl. After a trip to a local health clinic, she returned and cast her ballot. She was inspired by people in Chicago who often vote as two people. Spike Lee is going to hold a rally at NFL headquarters to find Colin Kaepernick a job. Man, how awful of a person must you be that Spike Lee has to come in and help you find a job? Maybe move out of the country to somewhere that hates America as much as you do. Look for a job there. What's for dinner? In Indiana, it was 22,000 pounds of frozen ravioli and jalapenos that went up in flames on an Indiana highway. The semi-driver said he saw smoke and hit the brakes. He stopped his truck, unhooked the trailer, and said the fire started shortly after that. Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. The longest personality study of all time suggests that over the course of a lifetime, just as your physical appearance changes and your cells are constantly replaced, your personality is also transformed beyond recognition. Meaning there might still be hope for that brat kid at the next table who ruined our romantic dinner at the restaurant the other night. New York is excited about the Spotted Cheetah, a pop-up restaurant from August 15th through the 17th that is completely Cheetos-driven, including perfectly fried green tomatoes, Cheetos mix-up crusted chicken malinaise, and Cheetos Sweetos crusted cheesecake. Ah, the power of cheese. In Fort Pierce, Florida, a woman bought a couch through a Facebook ad. As soon as she got it home, she decided to call police because, along with the pillows and cushions, she found a greenish, leafy substance that officers later identified as marijuana. The buyer also told police as soon as she got home, she got a text message from the seller to call her as soon as possible. The seller said she left an item of value in the couch and wanted it back. But when the buyer texted back that she was calling police, the seller began texting her using vulgar language and advised her she was stealing from her. Oddly enough, when police went to the seller's home and spoke with her, she suddenly did not want to file a report on the item that she'd left inside the couch or report a theft. Hmm. In other words, it's my marijuana unless you're calling the police, at which point I have no idea what marijuana even is. The city of Portland, Maine is looking at paying panhandlers $10.68 an hour if they're able to work. Well, you know, this makes perfect sense. I mean, they're already spending all of their waking moments looking for strangers to give them money, so working for the government is the next logical step. Today's Daily Dose of Weird News is brought to you by the children's audiobook The Adventures of Mr. Teapot by Tatiana Matina, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample and support Marlar House by downloading the audiobook for yourself at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Be sure to click that notification bell, too, so you'll know when I post new videos. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!